In a previous video, I showed you how to compute the present value for multiple cash flows. And I want to show you how to do that same example in Excel. And this is a good way to better understand how present value is computed. It's also a good way to learn how to use uh, Excel, the spreadsheet, because Excel is a very powerful tool for doing analysis. It's You can type tables in it, but you can do a lot of different calculations and you can change the numbers so that you can see how how a change in interest rates affects present value without having to redo all the calculations. So the previous example I, I had was the interest rate was 6% and you had cash flows of 1,000 in the first year, 1,000 in the second, et cetera, et cetera. And we wanted to calculate the present value. Well, we used this formula previously. The present value equals the cash flow in year one divided by one plus r plus the cash flow in year two divided by one plus r squared, etc. And that basically came from this formula here, that the present value of an individual cash flow in year n was going to be one plus uh, was going to be the cash flow divided by one plus r raised to the nth power. You can also write it this way: the cash flow in year, time period n times 1 over 1 plus r to the nth power. And that's what I'm going to put. I'm going to put this formula into this column here. So I'm going to have, I'm going to call that the present value factor. And so I want to put the formula in. What's the formula? It's 1 divided by, and I don't want to just put in uh, the number. I want to actually put in a formula. So it's going to be 1 plus and I'm going to use the interest rate that's right here. The reason I'm not going to type in 6% here is if I put the formula in and copy it down, I'll be able to change the interest rate once and have it recalculate my present value. So the interest rate here is in cell B3, so I'm going to put in B, but I'm going to put a dollar sign in because I'm going to copy the formula down. And when I copy it down, I don't want it to move to cell B4 etc or b5 b4 b5 b, there's nothing in b4 b5 has has um, a label which isn't going to do a calculation so i'm going to say that's in b3 and i want to raise it to a power and i want it to raise it to the first cash flow to the first power the second cash flow to the second power so these numbers are in a starts in a6 and i don't want a dollar sign because when i copy it down i want it to change uh, cell locations. Okay, So that's what I get. So 1 over 1 plus 6%, uh, 1 plus 0 0.06 raised to the first power is 0.943396. Okay? And I can just copy that down. So we get all these present value factors. This would be 1 over 1 plus 0 0.06 raised to the second power. This would be 1 over 1.06 raised to the third power, etc. So now what's the present value of the cash flows? The present value of the cash flows using this formula here is going to be this column times this column. So I'm going to put in a formula B6 times C6 and I get $943.40 for the first cash flow. Let me just copy these down. And so these are all the different cash flows, and it, then we just want to add them up. And we can do that by going to Excel. There's a summation function here. I can just click that on, sum it up. I get $4,212.36. What's the nice thing about putting the interest rate here? I can change the interest rate and see how it affects present value. So if I raise the interest rate to, say, 8%, Notice how the present value goes down. If I lowered it from 6% to, let's say, 3%, notice how present value goes up. So as the interest rate goes up, the present value goes down. Let's also use the function in Excel. Okay, So we can also get the present value of the cash flows. We should get the same number if we use the Excel function. But it's nice to do it this way just to see how it works. It also allows you to incorporate 
different interest rates. Sometimes you won't have 6% every period. You might have 6% for the first two periods and then 8% for the next three periods. Much easier to do it this way. You can't do it using the Excel formula. But the Excel formula is uses essentially the same notation as your financial calculator if you're used to using a financial calculator. The rate is the first thing that's going to be in cell B3. The number of periods is in A6. There's no payment. The PMT is an annuity. We don't, we, actually this whole thing is an annuity, but we're calculating the present value of each cash flow separately. So I'm going to put in zero. And then the future value is the 1,000, which is in B6. And you notice it gives you negative numbers. If you've worked with Excel or the financial calculator, if you put this, as, this as, a, as a positive number, this comes in as a negative number. But you see, it's the same number, 94340. And again, I can copy the formula down. And I can sum it up. And you can see that we get the same answer. But what's nice about doing it this way, longhand, instead of using the Excel function, is you get to see each cash flow, how you calculated it. And it's a good way to learn and understand your calculations without having to do each one separately by hand. This is kind of a black box. You just see a number here. You're not sure exactly what Excel is doing. Here you know what Excel is doing. It's computing. It's doing exactly this, the cash flow times the present value factor, which we computed here. So this is a great way to get familiar with Excel and to get a better understanding of, of present value.